Well, look, it's time to bring you a roundup of uh, the business news. I'm joined in the studio by France 24's Karis Garland. Good to have you as ever, Karis. Uh, we've been talking a lot about it on tonight's show. Narendra Modi, of course, here in uh, Paris, the guest of honour at this uh, annual Bastille Day celebrations. Important developments uh, are happening back home for Narendra Modi. Talk us through them, Karis. Yeah, so India has now sent a rocket to the moon. It's actually the second attempt uh, for New Delhi to land a spacecraft there. And it's hoping to join the three other countries that have managed the feat. The difference is that India's space program has a considerably lower budget. And the Chandrayaan-3 rocket is also vying to be the first to land at the lunar south pole. Prime Minister Narendra Modi hailed the launch as a new chapter in India's space odyssey. The country is hoping to capitalise on the booming space economy. Antonia Kerrigan reports. To infinity and beyond. Chandrayaan-3 has started its journey towards moon. The Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft is on a $74.6 million mission, controlled moon landing. But it's fair to say that if successful, India will have done it on a shoestring, compared with the $25 billion that went into the US Apollo missions. But coming to the party decades after the giant leap of 1969, India has the benefit of existing knowledge and highly skilled engineers working for much lower wages than their foreign counterparts. So far, it's an elite club of superpowers space agencies who have achieved controlled landing on the moon. Only Russia, the US and China so far. It's a club which India is vying to join. The junior minister for technology saying the country's space sector could be worth a trillion dollars in the coming years. With Elon Musk's SpaceX already selling tickets to the moon for tourists, it's set to become a destination for the super rich. So much so that half of the investment in lunar transport will come from the private sector by 2040. And it doesn't stop at tourism. The moon holds hundreds of billions of dollars in rare metals that mining giants Caterpillar and Rio Tinto are poised to exploit. Hoping to eclipse a failed first attempt that ended in a crash back in 2019, India would rather be on the inside looking out. The U.S. Edu Education Department says the Biden administration will cancel $39 billion in student debt for more than 800,000 borrowers. They'll be eligible for forgiveness if they've made either 20 or 25 years of monthly income-driven repayments. The department said the plan addresses what it called historical inaccuracies in keeping track of borrowers that qualified for forgiveness. It comes as the president seeks new ways to provide student loan relief after the Supreme Court blocked his plan to cancel hundreds of billion dollars in debt. J.P. Morgan Chase has reported a jump in profits for the second quarter, much of that driven by earnings from higher interest rates. Net income for the United States' biggest bank jumped 67 per cent year-on-year, up to $14.5 billion. Meanwhile, profits of the world's largest asset manager, BlackRock, also beat expectations. The New York-based firm ended the second quarter with $9.4 trillion in assets under management, up from $8.5 trillion a year earlier. Let's take a look at the day's trading action. Well, on Wall Street, stocks rose following those earnings reports from the major banks. Dow Jones adding nearly half a percent and both the S&P 500 and Nasdaq just shy of 1% up. The UK competition regulator has extended its final deadline for its review on Microsoft's $69 billion takeover of video game publisher Activision Blizzard. It comes after the Competition and Markets Authority received a detailed and complex new proposal from Microsoft that claimed material changes in circumstance. The CMA had rejected the deal in April, saying it would harm competition for the cloud gaming sector. But the British watchdog appears to have softened its stance after a court thwarted US regulators' efforts to block the agreement. And for the first time since it was founded in 1960, Australia's central bank will be led by a woman. Michelle Bullock is set to take over the role in September at a time when the Reserve Bank of Australia undergoes a shake-up. Under outgoing chief Philip Lowe, interest rates were raised to their highest level in over a decade. Canberra says Bullock is the best person to steer the institution in turbulent times.
history making appointment. Michelle Bullock will become the first woman to ever lead the Reserve Bank in this country. Uh, Michelle Bullock is the person best placed to take the Reserve Bank into the future. Uh, Michelle is an outstanding an economist, but also an accomplished and respected leader. So we'll be keeping an eye on Australian monetary policy after she takes the helm in September. We will indeed see if some of those interest rates can uh, kind of come down since they're at their highest level. I'll see you a bit later on in our Live from Paris show, uh, Karis, but thank you uh, for now.